Just so everyone knows, the reason this video is an hour and 20 minutes is because the last time I did a video with a whole defense video inside of it and sped it up, everyone was mad. So now there's an entire defense from wave zero to 21, almost beat it, to 10 seconds at the end of the video. Enjoy. And greetings, descendants. You go over my Viessa build. The last build I had didn't have any problems with it. However, I do think I was originally trying to build for both Absolute Zero and Cold Blooded. I do think that this was a mistake and I will be building Descendants specifically tailored to a purpose going forward or Viessa, depending on which ever country you'd like to pronounce that name in. First, we'll begin with the differences between Ultimate and Non-Ultimate. The difference is about 100 defense, 40 shields, and 50 HP. Not that big. But the true difference lies inside of the modules. I'll begin with base Viessa. First, she sports really high skill power modifiers. Frost Shards is 800, Cold Snap is 1150, and Blizzard is 1435 on an ongoing basis. An explosion at 1845. The first ability, Frost Shards, just a beam of ice. The second ability, Frost Road. Creates sort of like Valby's Water Puddle, just in ice form. This inherently doesn't do any damage. Then we have Cold Snap. Which used to be called Ice Wave. I don't know why they changed the name to Cold Snap. And the last ability, Blizzard. You will see three floating spheres around Viessa every time you cast a damaging ice spell. This passive cooldown right here is the cooldown for those ice spheres. Each one of the ice spheres looks complicated, but isn't. There is a level of ice shackle amount that you can inflict on enemies, how many ice shackle stages, and how slowed the enemies are. And that is base Viessa. Let's go over all of her descendant modules. The first one we have is Glacial Cloud. Glacial Cloud, I, in my opinion, makes Blizzard a worse ability. So it turns the blizzard into a sort of grenade throw, but since you have an AoE highlighter, I don't understand why you would do this, unless it specifically makes the game easier to play on console, but I play on a controller myself, so it doesn't make sense why they would just make the ability strictly worse. Then we have Hypothermia, which it says inflicts Ice Needle instead of Ice Shackle. However, it does more than this. It doesn't really say this. But if you notice, it changes Blizzard to a singular type skill. So if you get a reactor that is built for singular type damage, Hypothermia is a stronger ability. It also increases the skill power modifier of Frost Shards by 80%, but decreases the skill power modifier of Cold Snap by a lot more than that. The real main change is that it changes the passive to ice needles ice needles instead of providing a slowing debuff it provides a damage debuff so the original impact does 250 percent skill power on these ice spheres so you can see the red symbol above there dealing damage over time with ice needle you gain different levels based off of different skills with hypothermia then we have cold cohesion all this does is increase the number of spheres to five. This one, in my opinion, needs a massive buff because, as you can see, there is a massive delay in, in how they shoot. So if there is a delay in the ice spheres and you can get your cooldown to always have an ice sphere up with three ice spheres anyway, why would you care? That's why I think Cold Cohesion needs a massive buff. Now we'll go into my two favorite mods, and honestly, I think they are the best for Viessa, as one is a better ad clear and one is a better boss damage, but both are very good at both. I'll go over Void Damage first for Cold Bloodedness. So what it does is it changes your Frost Road. You don't get it anymore. You don't get the shield recovery from it either. Gives you a 5% skill power bonus whenever you activate the skill. Which you can see here, this 19 will go to 18 whenever the skill wears off. It does last quite some time. 
In addition, it gives all of your skills a 20% cooldown decrease and an MP cost decrease. This makes all of your skills very spammable, but you just run out of MP immediately, regardless of your build. There are certain things you can do to mitigate the MP loss, but you will run out of MP unless you have an endless supply of enemies, such as the Vesper farm. You can get the cooldown time of her blizzard to six seconds with this. And if you build it right, you can double stack your blizzards. Now we'll go into what I believe is the best module for Viessa, Absolute Zero. One thing Absolute Zero does, and it's going to make a lot of people cry if they want to switch to Absolute Zero, is change everything to singular. It's very good synergy for reactors, which means if you have a cold-blooded reactor and an Absolute Zero, you will need two different reactors, which kind of sucks. In addition, it increases the skill power modifier of all attacks, and it promotes damage on Frost Road. It gives you a 19 second frost road duration. Your roads don't last for 19 seconds, but the skill lasts for 19 seconds. And then you get a 250% skill power modifier, which you don't get any damage on the regular one. The maximum range increase of frost road is increased. Frost road increases your shield recovery by 10%. So if your cooldown is low enough, I do believe that it's worth it to stack shields on Viasa. This is completely opinionated and I prefer being able to snap my fingers and get 10% of my shield back more than I prefer having more hit points. That is a preference though. The only skill it doesn't make stronger is Cold Snap, but it doesn't sport a decrease enough to warrant anything. It also increases the damage of your Ice Spheres. This is why I prefer Absolute Zero, because not only do I think it's more fun, because you're just running around all of the time at, 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 with a movement speed bonus, shooting ice spells, like a wizard it just feels good on to the build I'm going to go over how range works so everyone knows how range works i think i overclocked the range in my original video and i think a lot of people are overclocking range as well the maximum expandable range is 250 percent this is not 250 percent plus the original range it is 250 percent of the original range so here i should see a maximum range of 10 meters so it says 10.6 here. If I place it on this X right here, so don't go overclocking your ranges. This is the, chill. the farthest it goes is right here. And then the explosion goes farther. If I could go well past 10 meters, it would not look like that. This would mean that even though this says 12, it is in fact still 10. I'll go over why I chose to make a skill damage descendant and my reactors and external components for the build, as well as if clairvoyance is the play here, which it isn't, and I'll explain. Clairvoyance could be a decent gun, but it's not a decent gun for damage purposes. The chill resistance that you get it can be good. However, if I use Gluttony, for example, and I was able to even get the maximum amount of damage resistance out of Gluttony, which is 80%, you can't debuff a creature's defense lower than 80%, I would still end up with more chill resistance than the enemy has fire resistance. The damage difference between my skills, Clairvoyance, and Gluttony, I don't think would override the damage of just having a gun that does damage. While not absolute dog crap, Clairvoyance probably still isn't the play here. As far as reactors go, mine has a skill cooldown and a singular skill power boost ratio. If you are going to maximize the bossing capabilities of any reactor, you want, will almost always want a skill attack on Colossus. Because that skill attack, which is a lot. The singular skill power boost ratio is only 8% damage, and it has a diminishing effect, sort of, because I already have a whole bunch of singular on the skill. The skill cooldown is paramount on my build. It allows me to skip an extra 6% skill cooldown that I might need on my build, allowing me to slot a different module than one of the focus on modules just for skill cooldown. The singular power skill boost ratio, I would prefer to be an attack on, on Colossus. However, it's good enough. Slayer set. If you're doing skill damage, Slayer set's probably the call in almost every case. In all of them, I have HP where I could have HP and MP where I could have MP. 
the Slayer memory set, I just, I was happy with getting one with defense on it. And the processor, I'm happy with having a gold max shield on it. The external components could be better. And this sheet inside of the TFD data compendium, you can either pause the screen here, or you can click a link in the description. That being said, this is my build. A lot of people would not put range on a boss damaging build. Range gives me extra ticks, and it also gives me more margin for error. Although my range is not maxed out, it is close enough. And I build for cooldown with these three modules, two critical hit modules, and shields. Why shields, you ask? Because I like snapping 10% of my shields whenever I feel like every six seconds. I have dangerous ambush on here. If I am going into a defense or something with a ton of adds, I switch a dangerous ambush with MP collector. And then on this module specifically, whenever we get polarities, so if you're watching this after polarities have already been added, just imagine another polarity in that slot. We'll be using this slot specifically for front lines. Why front lines over emergency measures? Because if there's a Luna in my party, she's going to make my crit 100% at this current build. So if I slot in front lines, I'll be wasting damage on the critical portion. If you wanted to strictly more damage, you could not use the Malachite and instead slot an attack slot a focus on singular in the in the slot instead it would give you more cooldown than you think you would get so i personally would put a focus on singular here if this module what wasn't a malachite module the amount of skill power modifier bonuses that 50 to 75 wouldn't really be worth all that much damage to me and before you go slotting multi-talented on the build just know that this 30% on singular is not 30% on singular. It is 30% skill power modifier on singular. So it kind of lies to you here. But I really have this slot for maximized conservation because holy crap, is she an MP guzzler. So this is the build that I'm going to run in 90% of the content in the game with Viessa. Once again, if I'm going more ad focus than boss focus, I take off dangerous ambush for MP collector. So this right here for maximum shield is it'll be about 3,000 when I'm level 40. And every time I snap my crossroad, I'll get a little over 300 hit points. But this is the build I want. And then whenever we get socket polarities, change maximize conservation for a critical hit module in, in hopes that a Luna jumps into the party. Because when a Luna jumps into the party, she will also give me MP with her buffs. I do think that we should start building polarities for buff characters, and I think the game will eventually let us change our module loadouts before and after Void Intercept ba bosses. Last time, I added me doing a defense into the last portion of the video, and I, I sped it up so that people could just slow it down at the end of the video. It'll be me just doing a defense with this build. They're clearly intending to destroy our facility.
Multiple enemy signals detected. An unexpectedly large force is advancing as the vanguard. They're not hesitating. They're clearly intending to destroy our facility. Chill. Multiple enemy signals detected. An unexpectedly large force is advancing as the vanguard.
Are you all right, Descendant? Looks like you're still holding strong. Enemy reinforcements spotted. Prepare for an attack. You can't escape. Shall we race? So annoying! <laughs> Multiple enemy signals detected. An unexpectedly large force is advancing as the vanguard. Shall we race? 
They're not hesitating. They're clearly intending to destroy our facility. Stay where you are. Stop my right there. Take this. They're not hesitating. They're clearly intending to destroy our facility. Watch carefully. One icicle coming up. Multiple enemy signals detected. An unexpectedly large force is advancing as the vanguard. Take this. Stay where you are. I'm 
Chill. They're not hesitating. They're clearly intending to destroy our facility. Chill.
We've detected another large-scale movement of forces. Defend the facility. Coming up. Detected another large scale movement of forces. Defend the facility. Take this. Shall we race?
smooth as ice. Multiple enemy signals detected. An unexpectedly large force is advancing as the vanguard. This is the ultimate chill. Watch carefully. One icicle coming up. Are you all right, Descendant? Looks like you're still holding strong. Enemy reinforcements spotted. Prepare for an attack.
an icicle. Coming up. They're not hesitating. They're clearly intending to destroy our facility. Incoming impact detected. Brace yourself. Take this. not hesitating. They're clearly intending to destroy our facility. destroyed at this rate. Don't take me later. I need help right now. I'll ice you all. This could get messy.
They're not hesitating. They're clearly intending to destroy our facility. I don't need to break my shield. Take this! No time to catch your breath. We have more enemies coming at us. Get messy. Thank you. 
chill. My shield is down. Descendant, no time to catch your breath. We have more enemies coming at us. Take this. I'm loading. How dare you break my shield? Multiple enemy signals detected. An unexpectedly large force is advancing as the vanguard. This is the ultimate chill. My turn. My shield is down.
No time to catch your breath. We have more enemies coming at us. Could get messy. <laughs> 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 